The Browns have made some roster moves following their preseason loss to the Vikings. So I want to break it all down on today's show because none of these names are super notable. But I do think that they represent some really important things that the Dog Pound should know about. So let's check out the four roster moves or additions and subtractions the Browns made. So they made two signings and two subtractions. The two signings were linebacker Brandon Boyer Randall and offensive tackle Chim Okafor. Now, they added Okafor because offensive tackle Akeem Adenije was placed on IR with a knee injury he picked up in that preseason loss, which was a big-time bummer for someone trying to make the roster because he sustained the injury, ta uh, tack tackling and tracing down a Vikings player that picked off a Tyler Huntley pass. And then Matt Landers was waived to make room for linebacker Brandon Borier Randall, which I do think has some significance to it, and I'll share why later on in the video. But let's start with the most important position of the four, offensive tackle. Browns had to sign an offensive tackle after James Hudson suffered an ankle injury and is out for this week. Jed Wills and Jack Conklin are still on the pup list, which is getting me more, more and more concerned by the day. And then you've got Akeem Adenaje being placed on IR with a knee injury. So they had to find someone at least to help get them through preseason week three. Insert Jim Okafor, who was a UDFA last year. He spent some time on the Eagles and Vikings roster in 2023. Not in the regular season or anything super meaningful like that, but hopping around a little bit on the 90-man and off-season rosters. He was also on the Browns roster earlier in training camp, so he's kind of been a taxi squad player from the back end of the roster to hopping around other places. But the Browns bring back a little bit of a familiar face just to band-aid them through the next week or so, and then they can reassess what their plan and strategy is for regular season week one, which is now less than three weeks away as Micah Parsons and the Cowboys come to town. But look at the Browns' offensive line. Like I was saying a moment ago, Jed Wills, Jack Conklin, just cross them out. James Hudson, he is out this week with an ankle injury. Cross him out. You got Dewan Jones at right tackle. I suppose you could put him at left, but then who's going to play right tackle, right? Jermaine Effetti is dealing with the hand injury, although it appears that he should be okay for this upcoming week in a... Revenge game for him against a team that picked him first uh, round a few years ago. So if you look at just left tackle purely, you're left with Okafor now and Lorenzo Thompson. Like It's not a really long or inspiring list. So the Browns had to go out and sign someone. Now, I've seen a lot of chatter in our comment section and just elsewhere about the Browns' slow start in the preseason. 0-2. What's your panic level, your concern level, following this slow start in the wins-loss category? 10 being you're freaking out, 1 being it doesn't matter at all. I'm probably at a 1. Boys and girls, the Browns didn't win a single preseason game last year, and they won 11 games with five different starting quarterbacks. There is just no connection from preseason to regular season. You can find a million examples of teams doing well in the preseason and not doing well in the regular season. I can think of one off the top of my head that you probably can too. You can also find examples of teams never winning a preseason game and winning a Super Bowl like the 2021 LA Rams. So do not make connections. There is no correlation between your preseason record and your regular season record. But with the Browns sustaining all these injuries at the offensive tackle position, I think it is time to start looking at serious free agents. Not, sorry, Chim Okafor, guys that get you through preseason week three as a backup in the second half. No, I'm saying players that can actually start week one against the Cowboys if Jed Wills is still not off the pup list, which if he finds himself on the pup list to open up the season, he's out for a minimum of four weeks. Same goes for Jack Conklin. Now, there are some pretty notable names still on the street. David Bakhtiari, five-time All-Pro. He has sustained a ton of injuries the last couple of years, though, in Green Bay. If he's healthy, he's worth a phone call and a tryout. DJ Humphreys, he was a longtime Arizona Cardinal. You can see if he's still in football shape. Same goes for Charles Leno. Dwayne Brown, I thought, filled in pretty well, if I remember. Last year, hopping around, I think he was with the Seahawks and the Jets. Donovan Smith with the Kansas City Chiefs. He was their Super Bowl winning left tackle. He got penalized a ton, but if you need a Band-Aid, he can probably step in and fill the role a lot better than some of these random Joe Schmoes, plumbers, and electricians off the street. So... The point being, you cannot start James Hudson week one. Like Even if he's healthy with the ankle injury, I just don't think it is responsible 
to put James Hudson out there to protect James to, to protect Deshaun Watson's blind side after the season we saw last year from James Hudson when he filled in a ton, right? Whether it was at left or right tackle, he played 556 snaps, which is a decent sample size. Like your top end guys play a thousand, so you can kind of just estimate playing half a season. And James Hudson in half a season had four sacks allowed, nine penalties. PFF rank of 77 out of 81, an overall grade of 46.8. You cannot trot James Hudson out there to start week one if Jed Wills is still on the pup list. You have to go out and sign a Donovan Smith, a David Bakhtiari. You must. Otherwise, it's going to be an absolute disaster. Now, an idea that's been tossed out there is, what about moving Joel Petonio to left tackle? I think Joel Petonio is capable of playing left tackle. I, I think sometimes in our brains we get this idea that if you're a guard, you can't play tackle. They're all human; ma they're all massive human beings. They can move from guard to tackle for a game or two if needed. But my issue with this idea is: Are you suggesting this to get them through preseason week three? If so, you should go out and find another option than putting your all-pro left guard at left tackle just to help get you through a meaningless preseason game. Now, if you're suggesting this for the regular season, that's not a very long-term answer, and you also have to find a new left guard, which I suppose you could stick Michael Dunn in there, but what's a better lineup? Batonio at his infrequent position of left tackle, Dunn at guard, or Joel Petonio at left guard, where he's played his entire career, and Donovan Smith, Cam Fleming, another actual tackle at offensive tackle for more than just one week if that's what you're trying to accomplish because Jed Wills is out for the first four weeks on the pup list. Like, if we're talking playoff game, you know, short notice, yeah, you can probably reshuffle a little bit. But if your plan is to move someone from their longtime position for the long term, that's not a very good plan. That's a short-term fix that you're trying to stretch over the long term. You should go out and make a long-term fix, like signing a David Bakhtiari, a Donovan Smith, someone who's actually played offensive tackle and not asking Petonio, hey, can we actually have you help us out for more than just one week? It might be four weeks. Now you're really stretching it. So I'm not really on board with this idea of starting Petonio at left tackle if it's not in a pinch in a last-minute notice. All right, before we move on to the rest of today's show, I want to show some love to our friends over at Game Time. If you're trying to get tickets to a Browns game, a Guardians game, or a concert in your area, you're going to want to listen up because Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play, like, play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Now, one thing I like about Game Time is they offer the Game Time Guarantee. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code CHAT Sports for $20 off. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, the other signing might not feel like a big signing, and I don't want to make it out as a huge deal, but I do think there is some underlying significance to the Brandon Boye Randall edition. He's a UDFA out of UConn. He was on the Bucks and Commanders practice squad last year, which is pretty impressive for a UDFA to get to. Those are not easy spots. Um, and he was on the Browns training camp roster as well earlier, but I don't really remember him joining back at the start of August. But regardless, the reason why I feel like this signing has some significance is I don't think the Browns were like all of a sudden blown away by Brandon Boyer's Randall's tape after watching it a few weeks later. I think they looked at the Browns linebacker depth chart here and realized, ooh, we might be in a pinch because we know JOK is rock solid. Devin Bush, I think, has had a pretty good preseason. Jordan Hicks and Tony Fields are MIA. Both of those guys have been dealing with injuries for a long time. Jordan Hicks, some undisclosed injury, couldn't find the cause of it. 
Tony Fields was in a walking boot back in Greenbrier, was it? The end of the Greenbrier visit or the start of their time in Berea for training camp. We haven't seen him. He's been out of commission for a while now. I feel like the Browns adding a linebacker is a sign of one or both of these players are not getting out of their injury statuses soon, and they are still going to be on the sideline. I know that this is the most redundant thing you've ever heard, but I'm just so over injuries. I don't understand why the Browns are cursed. I don't know if it's just this much of like unlucky this long, or if it's, hey, fundamentally something is wrong with the training staff. I'm not going to pretend to know what it's like to be on an NFL roster and the difference of training stats from one team to the next, or if it's players the Browns target are injury prone or what, but this is becoming a huge pattern that's just so tiresome and so frustrating, and we all feel the same way about it. Last thing or two I want to get across before we sign off. Uh, This week's debate that everyone is having, should the Browns start Deshaun Watson in preseason week three, given the injuries at left tackle? I think while we are rightfully so panicking about the injuries, we shouldn't pretend that like even though it's a UDFA, the guys the Browns have out there are turnstiles. Like they're still professional football players. They still got as close as you possibly can to the top of the mountain. You could have Deshaun Watson play ten snaps with a third or fourth string left tackle. It happens every so often in the NFL regular season, and no one talks about Watson not playing there. So if it's a player safety thing, it's got to go both ways. I think Deshaun Watson playing 10 snaps, and if you have, you know, Lorenzo Thompson in the left tackle, it's pretty clear. We're going to hand it off five times to the right side, and we're going to have a couple of quick passes, and we're never going to ask Deshaun Watson to hold on to the ball for more than three seconds and risk getting hit. So if you're really concerned about it, I think there's plenty of ways to work around that issue, but... I feel like Deshaun Watson should play. I think it would be a a disservice and a mistake to have his first real snap be against Micah Parsons and the Cowboys since November of last year when he suffered his shoulder injury. The guy has missed just too much football over the last three seasons. He has to get on the field, and I know it's the preseason game, and I don't care about the results of the preseason game. We know Deshaun Watson historically gets off to slow starts in his NFL career. I want to reduce that as much as possible. You add in a new offensive coordinator, and that's going to present you know, some early turbulence in terms of communication and dialect between the QB and OC. I want to see all those issues get reduced or resolved in August and not September. And if he goes out there and plays one or two series in the preseason, I'm sure there's going to be one or two things that they smooth out and avoid in the regular season. So what do you guys think? Should Watson play on Saturday against the Seahawks? Give me a yes or give me a no in the comment section below. I think he should. It's football. It's a violent sport. It's physical. I think the idea of sitting a guy because the offensive line is a little banged up is soft, to be honest. Uh, I thought you guys might enjoy some of the PFF grades from week two against the Vikings. Uh, So tight end Zaire Mitchell Payton. This is actually kind of just depressing that the first place guy has an 81.9 overall grade. Like I thought it'd be a little higher if you're first, but regardless, he's making a strong case to try and make this roster, especially with Giovanni Ricci picking up a knee injury, which sucks because he finished second. That could open up a roster spot for Mitchell Payton, Akeem Adenaje. I mean, Two out of your top three guys are out for the foreseeable future. Shelby Harris and Mike Hall rounding out the top five. All right, to wrap up today's show, we got to pick a card. Only a few more episodes left before the regular season, and the cards go away until hopefully the day after the Super Bowl. But which card do you want to go with, Mr. Goldman? I would like to go with the Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts? Okay, Queen of Hearts for Matt. I'm going to go with the... Ace of clubs. No, nine of spades, nine of spades. All right, that will do it for us on today's show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, and we will catch up later.